Well, respect. Um, I I want to see this movie because I'm a fan of Aretha Franklin, but I'll be honest, I don't really like musical biopics. And the reason why is just because they're worthless to me. I mean, there's some ones I really like, like A Hard Day's Night, um, The Doors musical biopic. Uh, there's the John Carpenter's Elvis one that's pretty good. But the real reason I hate them is because even ones that are really popular, like Bohemian Rhapsody, people will say shit like, yeah, the story's not real, but at least it introduces younger people to the artist in the movie, you know, otherwise they might not have known about it. But to me, it's like, no, if they're going to find out about the artist, they need to find out the real way, the real story, right? I don't need the bland Hollywood cookie cutter version of what these real people did, what they accomplished, how they accomplished it. And it's also like, why do I need to watch actors play the real people when I can watch the real people in a documentary or, or listen to the people who were actually there if those people aren't alive, you know? Like, are we, like um, you're not going to get a musical, you're not going to get a documentary about Freddie Mercury with him being in it, right? But, you know, the other bandmates are alive. They could tell you about it and they know the actual story and they're not going to give you the bland, cookie-cutter Hollywood version. So... Yeah, I, I, I understand there is some novelty and there is some fun to these movies, but it just feels so fake and manufactured. It doesn't feel real. And this is one of the worst examples of that. Um, because at least with the Queen one, it was very consistent in itself and what type of story it was telling and it went through the movie, it went through the motions. And it wasn't very good. I don't like the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. I like the Live Aid sequence in that movie. I think it's great. Because I think once you realize what's wrong with that movie is like, it's, let's play a Queen song that's on the, uh, uh, let's, they come up with a song, cut to the song, it's instantly a success, and that's the whole movie. Just that and constant repeat, and then you get to the Live Aid scene, and, and it ends. That's the movie, right? This is not like that. It is the more traditional type of biopic, and it's not a good one, um... Basically, what's wrong with this movie is, this is the first scene I, this, I'm gonna have some mild spoilers in this review, so I'm just gonna talk openly about this movie, so if you don't want to know anything about this movie, it's been out for a few days, go check it out if you want to see the movie and not know any spoilers, blah blah blah. What's wrong with this movie is, from the first scene where this happens, the movie starts with Aretha Franklin, she's a 10 year old little girl, and it kind of Starts a lot of bit uh, as her as a child. I was, I was surprised how much they showed of her being a child. Um, but there's a scene where this guy walks into her room, her bedroom, and he says at, to this ten year old little girl, and this is an adult man. He says, "What's your name, Aretha? Oh, Aretha, that's a that's a pretty name. You know, compliments her doll." And he says, "Do you have a boyfriend?" And she's like, "No, I don't have one." He's like, "I could be your boyfriend." And then she doesn't say anything, and then the light turns out, and the scene cuts. For for about 30 to 50 minutes, if not more in this movie, I kept wondering, what the hell was that about? Because I knew what happened. She got raped. That's what that scene was. But they don't show you anything else in the scene that what happened. And it's like, there's one scene where she's upset after that night, but it's like... They're not talking about what happened that night. And of course they're not going to talk about it because she's a 10-year-old little girl. She's not going to say, hey, I was raped. She barely understands what that is at that age, right? But it's still like, what is this sequence that I am watching? Like, what is this? And that's what a lot of this movie was, is yes, it told some elements about what happened to Aretha in real life. But it also cut out the nitty-gritty stuff. You know, this movie is about has rape in it it has abuse in it it has all it has uh parental abuse partner abuse uh drug addict uh, drug uh, alcohol and drugs and you know has all these things in it but it's but it's okay because because let me we just lightly touch on it they just lightly touch on everything it's just brush past so quick and it's like she, you know, she, Aretha has two children in this movie that are in one scene where she says, hey, I, 
um, you know, every time I'm gone, they, they want less and less to do with me. That's the last time you hear about those kids. Later in the movie, she gets married. And you know, you don't see, like, oh, a, like, a quick scene of them getting married or something, you know, like a normal biopic would do. Like, they cut, and they're married, and then they, like, you may now kiss the bride. Boom. Cut. You know, that type of thing. They don't do that. And she's married, she has kids, and those kids are in one scene. And and I think it was the maid or, or whatever. She goes, I'm going to take him back to wherever she said. I can't remember. Uh, with me. And, and then the, her partner says, I think that's best. But cut. Like, there is so much brushed past in this movie. And I get it. It is hard to do make a movie about someone's life, put it into two and a half hours. But it's also like... It felt like a lot of this movie was doing this because they didn't want to dive into the nitty gritty of it things. This movie was PG-13, and honestly, it felt like it was a movie that they had an R-rated cut for, or they had planned to make it R, but then the studio came in and said, no, that's not going to make money. Then put it on streaming and give it an audience. And uh, bullshit that these movies won't make money like that. Because here's the thing about this movie. It was about, it's an, about an artist who was alive in the 60s. Children are not going to watch this movie. No one's going to watch this movie who is younger than me. You know who the, you know who I was in a theater with? Black people and old folks. Old folks, you know. That's who these people are who know this artist and love them. I'm not saying there aren't anyone else that could love this artist, but, you know. I mean, obviously, I'm younger, but, you know, there aren't very many people like me who know who Aretha Franklin is. So it felt very weird to me that they were trying to make this movie, you know, as appealing for everybody. But this isn't a movie that's going to appeal to everybody because of it being about an artist that a lot of people aren't aware of. Um, not to say Aretha Franklin isn't popular. She's still incredibly popular and beloved. But what I'm saying is, you know, it, mostly by the demographic who was there when she was, a well... I guess, well, basically when she was still publishing albums and playing on the radio and relevant, you know what I mean? And that, and so it just felt weird to me. It was a lot of scenes of them brushing past stuff. I mean, they brushed past the abuse, the, the alcoholism, uh, you know, her kids, you know, what happened to her as a child. There's one scene where they cut and she's pregnant at 10 years, like old or 11 or whatever. It wasn't clear what exact age she was, but in the movie, but you know they cut, you know they cut to that for like two seconds. They don't ever bring that up again. There's just so much brush past here, and it just felt terrible. It was a terrible movie. Um, I mean, if you want to know about the real story about Aretha Franklin, then go watch a documentary because that's actually going to tell you the real story. You're not going to see this bland, cookie cutter Hollywood version of a story of an amazing artist who's an amazing talent. I mean, I thought we were, I was just going to get a fine standard Hollywood, uh, Hollywood biopic. And I got something a little bit worse than that. And I think it was just really unfortunate. Jennifer Hudson and all the actors did a really good job, but it doesn't matter when your script, your story, your everything you hear is not good enough to cover up all that. So, terrible. And now I'm going to tell you a little rant about how uh, the people I was in the theater with. So, um, like I said, when I went to see this movie, there was some black people. But for the most part, it was all old folks. And I'm talking like 70s, you know, things like that. Of course, I'm seeing it on a Tuesday in the afternoon. So, you know, that's probably why. Also, again, Aretha Franklin is only going to appeal to that kind of demographic for the most part. Like a movie about her because... I can't see a lot of people my age or things like that going, man, I gotta go watch that Aretha Franklin movie, you know? Um, but this this old woman and her husband, they had a bottle of wine. And they had a cup. And they were drinking wine. And she would not shut up the whole movie. Uh, she was very irritating. I considered going to an employee, but I'm very worried about that. Even at seven years old, I'm afraid someone's going to get a fight, do something, because 
you know, people do that. People get violent, you know. So I was afraid to go to an employee and be like, hey, can you tell her to be quiet or she's really disrupting. But she was horrible. I mean, she was one of the worst moviegoers I've ever seen uh, in my lifetime because this is what she did. She was drinking the whole movie. And so there's like one scene where Aretha Franklin, she walks out with the, some glasses on. And, and and it's it's hinted that before in that scene her partner hit her or something like that she goes oh she's wearing glasses that's got to be for a reason and then and then she takes off the glasses and her eyes are fine you know so clearly she I think she was hit but it was kind of hard to tell in the scene so the lady goes oh I guess not and it's like see what you're doing. You're talking and you're and you're saying, "Oh, this is gonna happen," and you're wrong. Well, it's just like then shut up and wait for the movie to show you what's going to happen. Stop, stop talking. Going, "Oh, this is gonna happen," and then it's like, "Oh, I guess it's not." Well, yeah, that's why you're supposed to be quiet and pay attention to what's happening in the movie. You know, then like her partner and her would get in a fight, and she leaves him, and then she go, she would say like, "Fight back." fight back she had this very like t snarky tone to her she's like fight back fight back she acted like it was her abusive partner or something it's like that's not and then she's she and then aretha got rid of him and she was like she was like clapping and i was like lady the cast and crew of this movie are not there no one cares about you clapping but then all these other old folks also started clapping after she did. And it's like, what the hell? Like, why are you clapping in the middle of this movie? It's, it, stop. It's, Aretha cannot hear you. She's in, she's, she's not real. Like, stop clapping. It, it just really pissed me off. I hate when people, you know, I, one of my pet peeves going to the movies is when people start clapping for no reason. It's just like, shut up. Okay. I don't understand why you're clapping. I get it, Star Wars, you know, the big moments and things like that. That's different because if you don't really want to see that while you're watching a Star Wars movie, just don't go opening night, you know. The point of going opening night is you get that experience with actual fans and they're excited. If you don't want to see that, don't go opening night. That's what I recommend. But, like, movies like this, you know, or just other movies I've been to where it's just like, I could tell the audience didn't like it because they were talking the whole movie and they were talking about how much it sucked, but yet... Everyone still gets up at the end of the movie and claps. It's like, why are you clapping? The director's not here. No one who made this movie is. No one. Why are you sitting here clapping? It was just... It's frustrating when that happens. But I didn't... Yeah, I didn't like this movie. And I did not like my experience. But... <laughs> it's, it's just one of those things. But... Yeah, I expected better for this movie, honestly. But I did not get it.